Here we go. Uh, kia ora everyone uh, and welcome along to our first Digital Pacific Live uh, session. It's lovely to have a number of you here uh, joining us uh, from different parts of the Pacific. Um, I'm just going to throw to, uh, sorry, my name is Tim Kong and I'm the program manager of the um, Pacific Virtual Museum Pilot uh, and my role is to um, help this project along, look after the people who are in it uh, and um, just be your host today. I'm going to throw to Tapatakura, who will open our um, session with a prayer. I think we've got a bit of a, a lag going on here, so I might cut out a bit. Turo, 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 keke mai, keke mai, keke mai, keke mai ki runga i te ata, ua waka, uira e ye koko. Kia ora nata tau kato to ko tapsikura to ko ingoa, uh, no maoke e pamati mai o, uh, ita mai ne o ko Caroline Masters awa ko Maori Raia, e no ana o ki Romati Beach, uh, e anga anga o ki roto ite National Library ki Pornike. Um, kia ora everybody, um, and thank you for joining our first webinar. Um, and showing the Cook Island collections here at the National Library. Um, we held an event last week in celebration of Cook Island Language Week on Tuesday, where we showed 39 items um, that come from the Cook Islands here at the Alexander Turnbull Library and also the National Library. So we um, invited the Cook Islands community here in Wellington to come and have a look and to share some of these stories of the collections that we held here. Um, and we just wanted to share um, what we showed the community last week um, to our wider audience. So yeah, that's a bit about what today is about. Choice, thanks Tapatu. Um, yeah, so there'll be three parts of today. As Tapatu said, we'll be showing you uh, just a small selection of some of the items. Um, from Alexander Turnbull Library here in Wellington. Um, we're also going to show you uh, some, uh, Suliana uh, is going to show some of the um, family research guides available for Pacific people. Um, and then I'll just demonstrate the Digital Pacific site, um, which will take us all up about 30 minutes. And then we're sort of leaving about 20 minutes for um, an open panel discussion or any questions. Um, you're welcome to ask questions as we go through in the, in the chat room. Uh, and put your hand up and interject uh, as we go through. Um, and Soliana and Tapatu and myself um, can answer any questions that you might have. Um, we are going to start with um, Soliana Ve. I'll leave her to introduce herself uh, and hand over to you now. Thanks, Soli. Kia ora na tātou katoa toa. I'm Lele. My name is Soliana Ve, and I am the Research Librarian Pacific here at the Alexander Turnbull Library. Um, the Alexander Turnbull Library is also a part of the National Library. So yeah, don't be confused with, with the same thing, um, just different teams. So I work in the research inquiries team. Um, and so our team deals with the majority of the public coming in to do research, coming into the library, and also putting inquiries through to the library um, with their research or whatever it is they want to ask. So I'm just going to take you guys, I'm just going to share the screen and take you guys to our website. Um, so you can, you can e either Google us, National Library of New Zealand, or put in our website or web address, which is natlib.govt.nz. Um, so this is where you'll be doing, um, coming in to do a search. So where it says search our collections, you, know, you can just put in like if it was an Aratonga that you're wanting. And then on the left-hand side, oh, left, yeah. left-hand side, um, you have the filter by type. So this is where you can filter the search results by newspapers, images, audios, or books, or um, so if you scroll down further, you can filter your results by the date. And also if these items are online or avail available um, physically. 
if you scroll down to the collection, um, we have other um, collections like Papers Past, which is like our digitized um, newspapers, magazines, parliamentary papers. Um, and then we just have the National Library catalog and then the Turnbull archival um, catalog. So just so you know, we have, there are two catalogs that we majorly use here. Um, and they are, I'll just go back to the homepage. And if we just scroll down, if you um, come under to search the collections here on the left. So there's the National Library Catalog, which is where we put our published materials on. And then there's the unpublished um, catalog, which is the Turnbull one, what we call Tiaki, which is where people can, uh, where we have the majority of journals and people's personal letters and correspondence um, and photo albums, the mostly um, part of the Turnbull archival collection. So um, I'm just, this is, so yeah, this is our website. If you go down to the bottom, you'll see all the way at the bottom, um, National Library Wellington, you'll see our contact details. So you can call us on our 0800 number um, if you're in New Zealand. Um, and also our opening hours, what time we're open on. Also, if you go all the way to the top, if you have a research inquiry or you're stuck, um, we have our Ask a Librarian service. So this is where my team and this is where I answer all um, our inquiries, get directed to different peoples in our team because we have people who are the photography specialist or oral history specialist, and I'm the Pacific specialist. So anything to do with the Pacific, they'll direct it to me or I'll work with the others in the team. Um, so yeah, you just fill out this form, um, make sure it's the ones in blue, the, the parts in blue of, of the blue ticker filled out. And then, yeah, you submit it. And then um, it can take 10 to 15 working days for us to get back. So if you're in a rush, then I highly um, recommend calling our 0800 number so you can just talk to one of us or coming in if you are in Wellington. Um, and then those that are working on the front desk can help you with your research inquiry. So that's the, a bit about the library. Now, in regards to um, our family, Pacifica Family History Guide, um, this is all on our website as well. Um, as you can see, we don't have all of the Pacific, but we have most of the Pacific on there. Um, and if we go to the Cook Island section, these just keep in mind the material that are on here is mostly what's available on our webs on our from our collections. So it's not really about what's out there. Mostly it's just, it is just based, not mostly it is all just what we have here. Um, and one of the major resources is family search. Um, and you can, some of their materials you can access online. Some of them you have to be on our, like you have to access through like a subscription or through having an account. So you can come onto our site and you can access it through our the National Library um, subscription. There's also materials from the Pacific Manuscripts um, Bureau, which another, another, most of them are on microfilm. So again, it's not likely to be digitized, but some may be available on their catalog. Um, so just have a look through there and you can see what type of items we have um, for family history. Like we had school records, um, we have people's personal family um, history, like, so these are some of the books that we have. Um, yeah, so just have a look through the history of the Tinomana family, history of the Papehia family, by Taira, Rere. Like we have, my, we might not have everything included in here, but we have the majority of the stuff that we have come across um, here within this guide. So um, I think that's it from me. If you guys have any questions, just pull through, but. Yeah, that's just a glimpse of what we have with our Pacifica Family History Guide and our website, our National Library. Cool. Thank you so much, Suliana. Uh, and thank you. Um, did anyone have any questions at that time? No, none coming through. That's all good. That's all good. Um, yeah, Tuliana, as a research librarian, uh, is a fantastic person to know in our space as we understand all the different Pacific collections. There is a lot of content held at National Library of New Zealand in Wellington. Uh, and yeah, if you are uh, 
um, in, in the Wellington region and able to come in. It's um, really great to, to be able to welcome you to our space um, and help you understand all of the different items that we do hold. So yeah, if you are local to the Wellington region, we'd love to, to see you. Um, we're going to, as we said, Tapati said at the start of the, the session, last week we hosted an event where we invited um, a number of people in to, to see some of the items. Um, and um, what we're going to do now uh, in uh, a very Zoom-based way uh, is just to show uh, a number of those items, a smaller subset. Um, and to do that, I'm going to turn on uh, camera Ulu here. Uh, he's actually known, some of you might know him on Twitter as at Ulu Nation, uh, but he is our cameraman for today. Uh, and Tups is going to talk us through a number of um, the items that we have here, the physical items. So I'll hand over to you guys. Cool. So the first item I'm going to be showing today is a book by um, Ronald Gordon Crombie. So the title of it is Field Notes on Palmerston Island. Slow down. <laughs> um, and so in the metadata, it, it doesn't have much of a description of it. It just says Field Notes of Palmerston Island. But I found this item to be the most interesting because um, first it starts off as the land rights that are held on four levels in Palmerston. So they've got the island as a whole and what their rights are, the extended families, households and individuals. And as we flick through the pages, oh, sorry. So this um, book was created in 1959. So if we flick through the pages, um, it actually shows the population of Palmerston Island at of the December the 20th, oh, November the 20th in 1959. And it has um, the family tree as well. So it starts off from William Masters, and then it actually shows my line, um, Carl Masters, and also um, my auntie Alice as well, so my mum's sister. Um, yeah, so I found this book really interesting because I had a connection to it. And so it goes through the first family, the second family and who was on the island, um, and the third family. So all the masters out there, you probably found um, some of your ancestors that were on the island at that time. And then also just goes through um, how many people were from the first, second and third family at that time. Um, and it also goes through, if we flick through pages, agriculture techniques, historical notes, um, the first land division and how it was divided into the families. Um, so heaps of information if you're looking for that uh, master's family genealogy and Palmerston Island. And it also has the local laws of the island as well. So, um, yeah, if you want to find out more, you kind of just have to email me so I can bring it out. <laughs> so, yeah, there's not much um, data. At the, it hasn't been digitised yet. So, yeah, this is just the way that we can show what we've got in the collection. And if you want any more information about the things that we're showing, um, just get in contact with me or Suliana. Um, so we'll move on to the next item, um, which is one of the newspapers um, in our collection, Iyo Karanga. And so this is one of the newspapers that are about to be digitised. Um, I'm only showing one today because actually the rest of the copies are in conservation and then they'll be heading towards our digitization um, team so then we can put these collections up online. Um, so this issue is from Monday, October the 24th in 1898. Um, so I'll just flick through. Um, some of the notices, sorry about the liquor permits on the left hand side there, um, saying when people can get their liquor permits as well. I thought that was quite funny. Um, and then on the next page over here, um, it talks about Cook Islands Parliament and who were the members of parliament for the different regions. 
So it does have some names. We've got J. Salmon, um, who was representing Arurangi. For Avarua, we have Tita. Takitimu, we have Samuela. Uh, Onirua, we have Tapi. Uh, Ivirua, we have Tutai. Um, yeah, and Mitiaro, we have Namaru. And the members from Achu and Moku weren't present that time. And Arurangi, we've got Ruru. Um, so then it just talks about um, the, the legislations and the laws that they were talking about during that parliamentary time as well. So, yep. And then on the back page, it's in Cook Island Māori. So we've got letters to the editor, that's in Cook Island Māori. Tua tua akakite. Um, yeah, and also what they talked about in Parliament in Cook Island Māori. So now I'm going to give it back to Suliana, who's going to be talking about some of the newspapers in our collection. Um, I'll just share the screen. Um, I'll share the screen again. Because on our um, Pacifica Family History Guide, we have... Um, the Cook Islands Gazette. We just have, we have one on Sapa that it was just digitized, but I can't show you because our screen was not working. And then we, um, one of the other ones we have is um, the Te Toria, which at the moment one of them is on Sapa and is in our Mihara exhibition downstairs. So yeah, go on to our um, Pacific Pacific Island and have a look um, under Cook Islands newspapers. There's more newspapers there. Maybe not everything again, but yeah, what we have come across that I've mentioned in there. Um, I might as well answer Sarah's question um, right now. Um, in regards to verifying, um, was it verifying family members? Um, we, our team does it door. We have another team called the Arrangement and Description Team. And, the, and any, if someone's got information about someone that's on our um, items in our collections, it will go to their team. Usually it won't be verified, but we do do a quick um, Google search or we ask around like people they think may know um, in the community or within our staff, our staff within our um, staff members. But yeah, usually they don't, they, they won't verify anything, but they will say that they put it in the metadata, like usually or sometimes um, where they got that information from. But yeah, I hope that answers your question. Any other questions, just let me know or let us know. Um, so Liana, Thank you. Uh, there's one question coming from Inano, um, and that is, is the Cook Island material available uh, in the National Library, the same as in the Rarotonga archives? And would you say the material is more intact and accessible in New Zealand? Um, I realise that the team, uh, one of the laptops has gone down there. Uh, so camera Ulu is actually uh, um, just an iPhone on a tripod. So um, what I'll do is I'll come off camera Ulu while the team come back in and I might jump across and start to present uh, my little piece. So um, yeah, so um, I'll just uh, talk a little bit about the Digital Pacific website uh, and I'll just bring that screen up uh, that we can share. Uh, and one second, here we go. So Digital Pacific uh, is the website that possibly some of you have seen, hopefully, uh, which is the key part of our um, Pacific Virtual Museum pilot. Um, the site has been, was launched in uh, November of last year. 
Uh, we built it in about 20 weeks uh, with a group uh, support from a co-design group from across the Pacific uh, and in a really quick way. It's designed to make um, visible and accessible uh, the digital uh, digitized cultural heritage uh, of people in the Pacific and of the Pacific. Um, and that for us has been an important distinction um, because we recognize that uh, the Pacific diaspora is wide uh, across Australia, New Zealand and other parts of the globe, but also that it is important to highlight and uplift the voices of people in the Pacific. So for us, um, the project has been focused on um, finding where digitized cultural heritage and records are held, things like the newspapers, the books, the different photos, um, and being able to present them in an interface and in a website that's designed to work in the Pacific. So the website um, is designed to work on uh, your um, mobile devices. It's designed to work in networks which are maybe 2G or 3G, uh, and it's designed to work um, in environments that hopefully it loads quickly uh, and is really useful for Pacific Island people. Um, it, the screen we're looking at right now is the records are tagged in some way with Cook Islands. Uh, and we have about, as you can see there on the on the page, about 7,000, uh, just over 7,000 items. Um, the, the tagging or the metadata, uh, which we describe is the responsibility of our content partners. So oftentimes um, there will be multiple locations uh, given, given the nature of how um, we collect and label a lot of these items. Um, but our content partners are you know, a key part of this project. We only ever uh, take records and metadata from our content partners and share and show them as they have them available. So currently we have uh, just over 40 uh, content partners, um, just, you know, the range there, a lot of Australian and New Zealand based institutions. Um, but Dr. Teresi, who some of you may know, uh, and her YouTube and Facebook live channels, uh, she's one of our content partners. And so we show her video based content. Uh, the Pitcairn Islands Study Centre, uh, Pacific Union College is a small college in just uh, in Calif Northern California. Um, Pacific Community, some of you may know as SPC, which is a, a large library, um, sort of a very important part of the regional Pacific engagement. Um, and that we've been able to um, share and show their content. So one of the things that makes our site hopefully useful and quite unique is that when you come to the site and uh, enter a search string, uh, you are searching from across all of our content partners. You're not searching across all of Google, for example, but you're searching for records that are held just by these um, content partners. And we do focus on uh, engaging and bringing on more content partners. So hopefully that database will increase. Um, yeah, similar to what Sully was demonstrating with the uh, NetLib site, um, please explore it. Please have a, uh, um, you know, explore the different content partners, some of the different items. Uh, we, excuse me, adjust these each week. But I just wanted to point out uh, what we've called a little function called user contributions. Um, the user contributions, uh, um, as you might imagine, uh, a lot of the records that are held by uh, Western or Australasian based institutions often comes particularly if it's um, from uh, multiple places uh, with just a simple um, tag around um, what, you know, what, what the label is, a description of it. Uh, and so um, when you look at that record, uh, you only see the perspective of the, the, the organization or that hold it. And they may not have uh, any indigenous knowledge or local knowledge or insight of to what, what a thing is or what's labeled. Um, and so the function we've built is allows any, uh, anyone to add their knowledge or share their knowledge with us. So if I find um, this one here, I quite like this one because this is a photo uh, held by the uh, Te Papa, the National Museum of New Zealand. Um, the metadata or the description of it is very plain. It describes what's in the photo. It's um, from a photo from a, taken in approximately 1992, uh, but gifted to them in 2012, and they've labeled it here with this detail. Um, that's it. That's all the information they have on it. Groups of men in white lava lava holding wooden panels is, is the, the title. Um, because of this little feature that we've built, uh, this guest who's contributed has uh, written a little bit more about it. 
um, and provided some context or some personal memory. And I think that's a really powerful piece because it actually um, allows us to allow or function allows specific people to, to share their knowledge and their insight on it. Um, and I like this line. I was 12 years old at the time. What a sight to see. It has never been repeated and I'm 40 years old now. A part of that canoe, I believe, the front of the canoe is still in Avatya today. Um, and that function for us is really important because it reflects, I think, how Pacific people tell their stories in an oral way. Uh, we've designed it, um, you know, it's hopefully relatively easy. If you click contribute your story, uh, you can walk through this process where you um, can contribute. Um, and it's very simple, your name, your email, your place, your story title, and your story. Uh, and what we do is uh, um, we've made it really clear here that you can be displayed as a guest or have your name displayed. We have an email address um, so that uh, we can contact you, but that's never publicly displayed. Uh, and we also built the function here where um, if you don't want to be contacted by the, uh, the organization that owns the content or holds the content, you can say yes or no. Um, and that's really important to us because actually uh, your story is yours and needs to be, uh, you know, retained by you. I think institutions and organizations often have the ability when they, when you share something with them that gets bound up by all of their copyright and all of their um, ways of licensing and making sense. And we wanted to build a function that allowed your story to remain yours, but that you shared it with us um, so that when a person views that story or that record, they see your version of the story as well as the institutions. And I think that's a very powerful, um, powerful piece of, of how we, um, this what this function does. It allows Pacific perspective to be um, seen alongside uh, the perspective of the archives, institutions, and libraries that most of our records come from. Um, so please, when you use the site, digitalpacific.org, uh, jump on there, click contribute your story, any of your memories. Um, and would be um, really uh, a real privilege to share your knowledge um, with, with the world and anyone who comes after. Uh, I'm going to stop my share here. And just see a couple of questions coming in. Uh, and I think my team is ready there. And you guys want to turn your cameras on so I can see you're there. <laughs> cool. So I'm going to hand back to. Um, the team there. Uh, I've got a few more of the uh, objects to share and show with people. Cool. So the next item I'm going to be sharing today is the Simpsons album visit of the New Zealand legislature to the Cook Islands and other islands in 1903. Um, so these photographs were taken on, in 1903 on behalf of New Zealand and the legislature as an opportunity of seeing Cook Islands and other islands that were annexed from the colony in 1901. So all 15 islands were visited um, on this voyage and the total distance traveled was 8,015 miles. So over seven weeks, um, they were able to visit all the islands of the Cook Islands, but also um, some of the other islands, so like Nui, Tokelau, Samoa, and Fiji. Um, so this album includes um, photographs of Pariki from Mangaia and Aitutaki. These ones are celebrations when they arrived in Rarotonga. Skip through. Um, over here, it's uh, Queen Makia at her palace. And with the party. Um, that's at the British Fleet. And I'll just skip through. Um, at the Palace Grounds. Um, and this one is in Maya. So some fishermen. Going out to get some fish. Um, over here, that one's taken in Mangaia. Um, this one is Nohuru Ariki and Honorary CH Mills. 
um, King and John and Pariki at Mangaia. So really old photos of people um, when they were doing this voyage. Um, these ones are taken in Maoke. Um, that one again is in Maoke. And you see the people um, with them as well. The church in Mangaia. This one's taken in Aesaki. Look how big the banana trees are there in Aesaki back then. And they're sitting with the kids. Um, and this one's also an Aitasaki of the boarding school as well. So really, really old photos. But yeah, again, many of these photos don't have names to these people. So hopefully um, people can recognize some of the people and their ancestors here. And then it goes into um, the other islands that they visited, like Tahiti and and in the Macasas as well. So the next item I'm going to show is again, the next item here is of um, Richard's uh, Seddon's visit to Rarotonga, which includes images of Makiatako, Queen of Rarotonga. There's her standing in front of the palace. Um, and that photo has actually been blown up and we've got a, now a Pacific space here at the National Library as well. Um, the next photo is of the feast. Yeah. Um, if Ulu can do a close up, it just shows how much they had all the pigs and everyone working together to cater for their visitors. Um, the next one is a really cool photo here. Um, if we can get a close up, that's all the harvest that they've shown and brought to the ceremony. And so this harvest was from Matav Matavira district. And you can see um, the chiefs at the front displaying their all their food and their harvest. Um, and the date on that is January 16th, 1896. And then the last picture is just of a hut and a family standing in front of it in 1896 as well. And that's in Daratonga. But yeah, that's some of the collection that we're showing today. Um, overall, we have 6,000 items in the Alexander and National Library collection. So this was only just touching the surface of what we've actually got here. Cool. Excellent, thank you so much, um, Tapatu and Suliana. And uh, I'll bring my camera back. Um, <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, you guys did really well there in terms of picking up the technical difficulties. So awesome. And thank you very much for that. Um, we had one other question, uh, and I don't know if um, Soliana is able to answer this. Um, I'll just, sorry, I'll just swap out and go back to gallery because you guys are all joined in now. Um, we had one question from Inano, uh, and this might be for you, Suliana. Uh, is the Cook Islands material available in the National Library the same as in the Rarotonga archives? And would you say the material is more intact and accessible in, uh, in New Zealand? Uh, Need to grab the mic, yep. <laughs> sorry, can you repeat that question again? Uh, so is the Cook Island material available at National Library? the same as in the Rarotonga archives? Uh, and would you say the material is more intact and accessible in New Zealand? Um, I don't know what's in the Rarotongan archives. Um, do you know what's there? 
Well, I feel like it would be the same. Um, they would keep, I guess, only government-specific records. But I think we have to remember that most of these items are donated as well. Mm. Um, yeah, so I think all of these items are donations. So I think there's a difference between us and the Cook Island archives. Um, and they'll mostly have their government records on them, whereas we're just kind of like collecting for interest. That's what Alexander Turnbull was doing. It's interested in this stuff, but, it's just, but it's, yeah. It's just how the you were doing the example. So yeah, they're really accessible. Um, so the demonstration at the start when Suliana was going through the National Library um website um and yeah so sorry i'll talk to that um you can't just come in and expect to see everything like straight away you're gonna have to register and then you're gonna have to request the item um which you can do from home online if you have internet connection um yeah because the items are all in safe storages like in the basement like underground and um, or under our offices way way down um, so yeah, anyone's welcome to come. Anyone's uh, um, welcome to be a member. Anyone's welcome to register. Um, you just yeah, you just have to go through the register and request process. Um, and yeah, and then you can view items because yeah, that's during our opening hours. Cool. And I've got a question on the Facebook chat as well. So oh, yeah. Jerry has just asked any future plans of partnering with the Fiji Museum? Tim can answer that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, Jerry. Uh, we are very keen to, we've had a number of emails with um, colleagues at the Fiji Museum and also the National Archives of Fiji. Um, because our uh, site uh, requires that the records to be as, two things or three things have to happen before we can show them on our site. One is that they have to be digitized. And as we've talked through today, there's a number of items, even at National Library of New Zealand that aren't digitized. So digitization is the first step. Um, once it's digitized, it needs to be available on a website um, and uh, for us to access. Uh, and once those two things are done, then we can present it. Um, and the challenge is, I think, for uh, many institutions, again, not just in the Pacific, but around the world is digitization and then hosting digitized material um, can be costly and, and can be a challenge. So um, we have uh, been in conversation with the Fiji Museum and National Archives of Fiji, uh, as well as USP and a number of other institutions across the Pacific. Um, we, um, as a project can't, can't do those first two things, the digitization and then the hosting, um, but we are very um, conscious of the reality of where people are in their different projects. And so we want to meet them where they are, um, engage and, and hopefully be as much a support as we can. We're also really conscious in Fiji at the moment, for example, the, the COVID conditions make it a challenge uh, for um, institutions to be doing their work or working with materials or being on site. So. Um, we're really conscious of um, just honouring that and, and making as much space as possible. Um, Taps from my end, there was one comment around the, I think it was just more a, 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 a bouquet, uh, which just said, Malo Tapatu, uh, was that 6,000 Cook Island items at the National Library? Awesome. Um, and I'm not sure if that's a question, <laughs> whether like that's disbelief or whether that's um, just cheers for having those many at that many items but is that the, the exact figure oh uh, it's over six thousand i think when i looked it was six thousand and fifteen items that are held here at the national library and also the alexander turnbull um so that's in, that's all together so that includes um so some of the items that we showed last week were letters it's a lot of personal items that people have donated photographs um government documents text any other things that i miss yeah most of them are heaps of photographs um lots of people have been donating their family albums um last week we showed an album where a family had gone to rarotonga for a holiday in aitisaki moke in uh, palmerston island so they've shared their their photographs but they've also named the people that they took pictures of which is quite rare um 
when we're looking through these collections. Yep, absolutely. I think one of the other uh, pieces, and this came up last week in the in the event as well, is that when you use digitalpacific.org and type in, say, a family name, because we're pulling uh, records from many different places, um, in, in this case, this family found uh, some of the Pacific Island, a, a Pacific Island monthly record. And if some of you are aware, the Pacific Island monthly ran, I think, for about 80 years. Uh, it was a magazine published across the Pacific. Um, it has been fully digitized and is held by the National Library of Australia, who is one of um, our content partners and implementing partners. And so when they used the site Digital Pacific, they, they were, uh, the family name, a handful of um, records came back and they were looking at a Pacific Island monthly um, article that had been digitized uh, and were reading it and looking at the photo, I think from 1942. And that was a story and a photo that they'd never seen of their grandfather. Um, and that was really powerful, you know, the fact that the website we've built helped them access really quickly and easily content that the National Library of Australia has digitized and is um, responsible for and looking after, um, which I think shows the power of our project, um, but also the power um, of what institutions like National Library of Australia um, has, has um, got and is holding. Uh, question here in the Q&A from Sarah Ann, your sister Tapatu, uh, she said, are there any items that you don't or won't accept or publish to the website? Um, shall I speak to that? Awesome. <laughs> so I think for the, so there's probably two constructs there. Um, and then Suliana can speak to what institutions, in this case, National Library of New Zealand, um, their conditions. I will say for Digital Pacific, um, our scope is around uh, cultural heritage uh, and um, content partners based in and around the Pacific. Um, I think there's there's often a, a challenge between um, once it's digitized, <laughs> what is culture and what is not. I think in, in a certain perspective, like the items that we've looked at today uh, could be seen as cultural heritage, photos and um, texts and letters. But that's very much, I think, personally, a construct of the institutions that we, that that we're in, the National Library of New Zealand. I think for Pacific Island people, um, uh, you know, song and dance and um, preparation of food, uh, um, you know, performances are all very much a part of our culture. And so how do we represent that? Um, what are the platforms and what are the digital forms to represent that nature, which is very much um, at the heart of our culture? Um, and so I think for me, I, I intentionally keep it quite broad that we want to support institutions that hold um, records in literary forms, uh, as well as records that are in uh, or orgs that are institutions that are holding it in maybe audio or video forms because of our oral traditions. Um, we probably, you know, in terms of exclusion, we, we, um, we aren't, for example, going for to find content partners who are maybe focused on science or, or politics or specific things. Um, but we also recognize that institutions um, such as a library will have a, ride, a wide range of those, those um, topics and records. So for example, pulling from the SPC, um, Pacific Communities Collections, they obviously have a lot of focus on climate change, on science and things like that, um, all within a Pacific context. Uh, and so we're comfortable showing that as well. Um, so Liana, do you want to speak any more? So I hope that answered your question, Sarah. Um, so do you want to speak any more about national libraries? Um, oh, she was asking about the website, but if you were to want to, um, like if they won't put stuff up or if it was about our website, the national library website, they won't put, They'll say something's there, but they won't. There, will be, there are access restrictions to um, some of our items. So depending on the donor and how they made their agreement with um, the library at the time that they um, donated their items, um, yeah, there are, um, th there are things there that um, require um, permission. For example, we have some of the Pacific Manuscript Bureau um, microfilms, like some of the agents that went over um, some of their, their, their items are restricted and then they have to apply to the archivist over in the Hook Islands um, for permission and they have to go to us and then we, um, then we can allow them um, 
to XCCM, but if there are people wanting to donate items to the library, you're welcome to um, talk to the curators about that. We have a, the Alexander Temple Library has a collection policy and um, wanting to collect from the Pacific. So yeah, if you did want to donate or maybe loan, I don't, whichever one, um, yeah, we can direct you to the right people to talk to about it. Cause yeah, that's not, yeah. Cause we had a, um, a family that came in last week um, talking about they have items just in the box in their garage and like, they don't know what to do with it. So, um, and they contacted us after coming, to, after visiting and we directed them to the curator that they talked to about the possibility of it becoming a part of our collections. And you have to remember we are, um, we have safe, um, what do you call it? Safe um, storage. Storage? <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's why um, a lot of people do donate their items to us because if they just leave it with their family members, you know, they, they don't know if it's going to last long or if it's going to be chucked out. So yeah, people, if you, it's something to think about for the future if you did want to donate to or yeah, give your items for us to look after. That's that second question. Oh, I just, I'll add one more piece in there. Oh, sorry, the question for you to think about while I answer this silly was, uh, what is the oldest dated photo or documentation of the Cook Islands that you have digitized? Um, and while you think about it, just to, to emphasize what uh, Suliana said, that Digital Pacific as a website, um, we will only ever show uh, content that's digitized and accessible. So for example, if they are restrictions or they're not available online, we don't currently um, show those on our site. You would have to go to the institution site to, to, visit, to, to view those and then to engage with the institution as to how to access it. Basically, we always respect the rights of the content partner and the conditions that they've placed on the records. So Lee, did you have a, would you have any idea of that? <laughs> what is the oldest dated photo or documentation of the Cook Islands that has been digitized? Um, oh, we don't, we're not sure. I mean, maybe the photos that we just showed, because those are from the 18, uh, from 1896, um, of Queen Makia and the harvest. Um, I'm just trying to think how old the Te Torea one that was, that's downstairs. But, yeah, I'm not sure what the oldest item is that we have that is digitized. Um, the noose. Um, last week when we had a look at the newspapers that were about to be digitized, it was really interesting that some of them were handwritten um, and some of the issues. And they were, I think, do you remember, Tim, when they... I, they I, want, this, I want to say 1860. Uh, 1860. But, um, yeah. Yeah, so those one, oh, the newspapers are pretty are older than the photographs that we've got here. Um, I was just doing a search. Cool. Is there any, I'm just conscious of time as well. We've got about five more minutes left in our, in our session today. Is there anyone who, uh, because there's only about nine people in, is there anyone who wanted to just uh, join the conversation, stick their head up and turn the video on? You don't have to, but it sometimes is easier than us answering texts. <laughs> Oh, okay. Where's the baby, Sarah? Oh. I'll bring uh, James in and I'll bring Leonie in. <laughs> oh, Leonie. So, yeah, James and Leonie, you're um, free to talk. <laughs> I don't know where my camera is, but uh, <laughs> or, um, Tim, you mentioned about the uh, contributions from public in terms of some of the, uh, in some of the collections that you've got archived there um, and the stories that they may have or they may uh, be prompted from those photos or resources that you have. Um, are there any moderation processes or protocols around the types of replies you receive? I can just sort of see um, situations where things are being disputed by uh, people in terms of uh, that's not so and so, that's this and that, this is that, you know, I just sort of see that as any sort of rules or protocols around that process. 
Yeah, we haven't. Um, so we we framed it as a post moderation. Basically, if if that conversation comes up because of a post, um, we'll support that. Um, we have a, a what we call a reporter contribution function, which basically is a flag to us to engage with that person, uh, and that's really done in quite a quite a manual way. It's literally trying to put the two parties together uh, and and to allow them to tell an or about yay or nay. I think there's also the construct of we're interested in it. You could have, um, we're not interested in it being a, a Facebook comments thread because Facebook is far bigger than anything we could build. Uh, and those conversations might happen in Facebook. Um, we, uh, I suppose ultimately we can, and we can take, we can remove comments um, for, um, for reasons uh, as, as discussed. And we would always engage with the, the person who posted as to why we were taking it down. Um, but we don't, um, yeah, I guess we've walked into it quite eyes open that these things might occur, but we want to enable a space for for um, reflection, for comment to occur. Um, I, I guess we've also designed it in a way that you can have multiple perspectives on the thing, on the record. Um, I think I was, I've always been fascinated by the, the record and its metadata as held by the institution is often seen as the, the truth. Um, and we know that even in the three or four that we've seen already that actually the Pacific perspective is, is just another reality. Uh, and what is it for a, an item as you see it on the site and, and then multiple versions of that reality to be presented. Um, and if we've built a space that can hold multiple versions um, respectfully, then I think that's a powerful um, place for us to be and to have created. Yeah, that's a great concept. Thanks, thanks for the answer, that was great. Thank you. Leon, you've left the text, but you can talk as well, buddy. <laughs> Don't know if she wants to. Um, yeah, Leonie did did say in the Q&A, she said, do we have plans for more of these Zoom sessions? They're awesome. Thank you for sharing. Um, yes, Leonie, we do. Um, we uh, would probably going to align them with uh, Pacific uh, Island Language Weeks um, here in Aotearoa, um, but we're also interested in engaging with content partners, just like Solu spoken for National Library, um, having our other content partners in as panelists and having them share their work as well. So yeah, we're definitely keen to um, go forward and do a few more. Uh, so I think this was in regards to well, the, the question about what the oldest item is we have digitized. Um, yeah, from the Cook Islands. Um, I don't know if you've counted as Cook, the Cook Islands, from the Cook Islands, because um, basically um, William Ellis, who was on Captain Cook's third voyage, has a lot of sketches of places like... Um, um, yeah, there's like Mangaya and there's, I think, yeah, just basically like landscapes throughout the Cook Islands. And there's other places as well, like there's sketches of Tonga and Tahiti as well. So, yeah, 1777 is the, is the answer. And are those digitized, Ulu? Yeah, so those sketches are digitized, yeah. Oh, cool. So you could search and find them either on yep. the Pacific or on the net website as well. Yes. Excellent. All right. Well, I think um, there's no other questions that I can spot in the different chat rooms. Um, and it is uh, one minute to one. So um, we, I think we'll wrap up here. I just want to say as the host, thank you very much to those who attended. Thank you very much to my team at the end of the line there at the National Library Building for picking up that you know, working around that technical hitch in the middle. Um, thank you to Sully. Thank you to cameraman Ulu. Uh, and oh, your sister Genevieve says hi, Tapatu. I don't know if you can <laughs> um, thank you, everyone. Uh, we yes. hope this has given you some insight into what's available. Uh, and um, please, you know, use either our websites. Please reach out to us uh, if in any way. If you had further questions, would be would love to help and support where you where you are. Um, I'm just going to pass to Tapatu to close with uh, Karakia. Cool. Tapari to mata e te atua e aroa mai a mata tamariki arane. Kia ora mata yaque.
Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.